He had such passion, you know, for fighting for the, for the causes of ordinary workers. She ended up doing endless, endless cases. She won loads and loads of individual cases for people. And she was fighting to save the hospital years ago when it, did, when it was threatened, as people know. And she's got a brilliant record. And to be honest, what, the reason she's been sacked is pure victimisation, as we all know, for the bullying harassment by Bart's Health. But as soon as we merged with Bart's Health, or they took us over, which is what we always said, they actually went for her because she was one of the key stewards that had been there, the branch chair of Unison for like 30 years. And, you know, they found lots of things and we all know the things she was uh, attacked by. And to be honest, her, everything got stopped. The, you know, the stroke unit that she went to, the, the scrutiny committee, all those things got dropped. And the only thing they're really getting on now is something she did 30 years ago, assaulting police on a demonstration, which her, her professional body said there's no case to answer. And that came up just a few weeks ago. And we know now that they're going to be under quite a lot of pressure to actually say that she, really there isn't a case to answer and she should never have been sacked because it's so obvious that it's just victimisation of her trade union activities. So here we are today at the third time <coughs> for Charlotte to get some justice at a tribunal. It's a fantastic turnout. Look at us, we're surrounded by banners here, people who care, not just about respect for people that work in our public services, that work for the NHS, but realise that bullying is endemic in the <coughs> NHS and other public services, and that Charlotte's fight is a fight for all NHS workers, for respect for what they do, for respect <coughs> for them as human beings. And we have similar struggles in West Wales, sorry, where um, our hospital, Withy Bush, is threatened with, is being downgraded very rapidly. And the results of this, they've taken away the obstetric care for babies <coughs> and they reduced the A&E. And uh, when my daughter-in-law went to register a baby, that she heard that all the babies that month had been born in the ambulance, there weren't very many. And a man died on New Year's Day going from hospital to hospital where the ambulance um, staff were trying to resuscitate him, but he couldn't get in and so he died. So that is the sort of result from the um, sort of things that are going on and Charlotte was trying to stop this happening. I think it's well known to everybody who's a union rep and a union-minded person that one of the most important things in doing a, a shop steward's or union rep's job is to inform everybody of what is going on. Quite often management used to say to me stuff like within these four walls and confidentially speaking and I would tell management that as a representative elected by the people of working on the lines there is no confidentiality. The only confidentiality you might keep is if there's some personal reference to a person's medical record or something very personal. But apart from that, there is no confidentiality. The role of a union rep is to inform the members of what is going on. Yeah. Yeah. We've heard from Cameron, we've heard from Obama, we've heard all these people talk about the defense of whistleblowers. Charlotte wasn't really a whistleblower, she was doing her union job. Yeah. But if you want to talk yeah. about whistleblowing, she was whistleblowing. <laughs> And we have seen with Obama and Cameron that whistleblowers continue to be persecuted when they should be getting medals and seats in the House of Lords and I don't know all why. Yeah, yeah. So on the point of Charlotte being victimized for reporting back to her members and to people concerned about the bullying, about the cuts taking place, about the downgrading and about the dangers to the whole National Health Section and that, that particular section, Whips Cross, Newham General Hospital, Barts and the London Hospital, they're in that group and there is great danger for the people of this area of London for what may happen there with the various cuts and things taking place. First of all on the National Health Service, I'd just like to remind myself, if you like, that out of the devastation of the Second World War, out of the devastation of 60 million deaths, 
including the most horrendous uh, form of industrial murder seen in world history, the concentration camps uh, of, of the Nazis. Out of all that devastation uh, came progress in various countries throughout the world. And one of the things that was the fruits uh, of that sacrifice, of the defeat of world fascism, was the National Health Service. And that's one of the most precious things that we've managed to achieve in this country, and it's under great danger. And part of defending the National Health Service is to defend Charlotte and reinstate Charlotte. Thank you. I want to bring a message of support, not just from our branch, but from the London region of Unison and from local government. And there's a very simple reason for that. The most fundamental principle trade unions have to fight for is against the victimisation of trade unions. Because there's a very simple reason why the government and trust like Barts want to remove people like Charlotte, and it's this. If you want to carry out austerity, if you want to cut the NHS to the bone, then you have to try and remove the people who are going to defend it. And Charlotte has an absolutely outstanding record, of which she should be very proud, and we should be very proud, of speaking out and defending the NHS. And so I mentioned earlier that even if this tribunal rules reinstatement, that an employer can refuse to reinstate. And I think one thing we ought to be saying in the run-up to this general election, it's a scandal in Britain today that trade unions can be sacked unfairly and not reinstated. The Labour government ought to commit itself not just to repealing anti-union laws, but making sure that employers have to reinstate people where tribunals rule it. And that attack is getting even worse, because the Tories are now saying they want to bring in even more stringent anti-union laws for essential services like the health service, that 40% of the whole workforce or the whole trade union membership would have to vote in favour of strike for it to be a, a lawful strike. Well, I tell you, there would never be a single government in this country if you applied the same criteria to elected governments. Yeah. It's an absolute scandal. What it's about is trying to remove resistance to what they want to do. And what they want to do is to cut and privatise our NHS, even though we've just seen the very first hospital that was taken over fully by a private company have to hand it back because they were the first hospital ever to be found to be providing such an inadequate level of care that they were failing. So this is a battle about defending the whole of the NHS and we have to stand together for it. And on our side, I think there is a growing mood for defending the NHS and for pending public services. By the way, we shouldn't doubt how serious those attacks are. I don't know if people heard Nigel Farage on the radio this morning. Nigel Farage had to retreat from saying what he wants to do is get rid of the NHS, but he said we will return to it. And in these elections, if they, UKIP do well, don't doubt that they will be on the hard right line of saying we want to remove the whole of the NHS. And in doing it, they'll seek to divide us. The lies that are said, the problem we have in our health service, a lack of adequate funding. But there are people who try and blame it on other things. Who say it's immigration. Who say it's too many people coming to use our NHS. But I say this, our NHS was built by people coming from all over the world to provide health care for us, and it wouldn't survive now without the labour of migrant workers. We built our NHS together, we will defend it together, we will not have racism dividing us, and we won't have victimisation. The last thing I want to say is a message of hope. I think Charlotte is a fantastic example of someone who has never given up and not stopped fighting. And the fight goes on. Next week, the 29th of January, health workers all across the country will be engaged in 12-hour strike action about pay. And the fight for pay is part of defending the NHS. When you look at the fact that across the country, hospitals have to announce major incidents because of the lack of adequate staffing. Part of that, particularly in London, 
is pay cuts are so severe, you cannot get the skilled and qualified staff to stay. And in parts, it's probably as bad or worse than anywhere. The damn bandit that's gone on is going to call a whirlwind of cuts in healthcare. So we have to stand together. So today we're here for solidarity with Charlotte. We say we stand with Charlotte, and like Charlotte, we are here to stay, we are here to fight, we're going to defend trade union rights, and we're going to defend the NHS. And it's a, it's a basic principle of trade unionism that we stand by each other. We look after our own. An injury to one is an injury to all. And I'm very proud that our NEC of Unison has put out a statement saying we fully support Charlotte Monroe, that this is a case of trade union victimisation, and we're going to fight tooth and nail to make sure that this judge sees that Charlotte Monroe must be reinstated. What do we want? Charlotte! We've got a campaign to save maternity and accident and emergency facilities in our local hospitals in the uh, Barking and Dagenham and Redbridge and, and, and Havering Trust. So it's the same fight for everybody, it's the same issues everywhere. They're having a dig at trade unionists because trade unions are the strength of organisation that we've got. So all strength to you and get Charlotte back in. Hello, I'm a patient. I'm a resident of Waltham Forest and I had my daughter in late 2010, uh, early 2010, and I noticed the cuts, I noticed the cutbacks, I noticed the reorganisation, I noticed the lack of support, I was horrified and I joined my local campaign and the people on the front line, they're front line defending and they're front line caring and while I was in my campaign, Charlotte was sacked and it's not just union people that need to know about Charlotte, it's the public because Charlotte has taken one for the union and she's taken one for us, the residents, and they need to be supporting her. So I'm here. I hope more residents are here. I hope more people will step forward because this is a big, big deal. I know you all know that, but I think the public need to know about this. And as Charlotte said in uh, 2013 in the protest, she said people are speaking out because the stakes are too high. And I think residents need to know how the staff feel and what they're prepared to do to stand up for our NHS. I'm here from the Save Lewisham Hospital campaign. We have fought long and hard to save Lewisham Hospital and it's one part of a huge fight that we have now against the attacks against the NHS and the attacks against trades unions. So we are here to say we want Charlotte reinstated and we see this not only as a fight for the NHS, but also as part of a fight against austerity in general. We know that when you look across the world, if you combine austerity with cuts to the welfare state, that you kill people. This has been shown time and again. So we are now part of a huge global fight. So not just the trade unions, not just the NHS, but this is a fight for welfare services across the world. So here we are, Save Lewisham Hospital. We support Charlotte. Yes. What do we want? Charlotte reinstated. When do we want it? Now. Reinstate Charlotte. Reinstate Charlotte. Reinstate Charlotte. Reinstate Charlotte. Reinstate Charlotte. This is my favourite. Because it's our NHS. Who's NHS? Our NHS! 